Hello and welcome back to the Professional Disc Golf Association 2019 World Championships on Joe Miss Pro. We are back in Eureka, Illinois at the Eureka Lake Course. Big sexy commentary here with you as always, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. And through two rounds, we have the young gun from Texas, Emerson Keith, just impressing everyone with his fairways hit and just his composure in this situation. Look at that right there. He's this segment presented by Lens Crafters Transition Lenses. No sun too bright. <laughs> and Paul Macbeth with 100% circle one putting at Northwood Gold yesterday. 75% fairways hit on one of the toughest fairways to hit course there is. Anthony scrambling well, six out of eight and perfect putting. Six out of eight is incredible on a course that difficult. And it, what's eight out of eight? Wow, eight out of eight. And just coming straight from the French Open, we've got Chris Clemens, tennis player extraordinaire. Yeah, I think first my round game exit, pretty but... aggressive. So I want to birdie all of them, but you know, I, I think I'm smart enough to know when to and not to go for them. Uh, just if I'm out of position on certain holes, especially six, that's one where you have to be in a great position in order to even attack the basket. So um, if it comes up, I'm going to go for it. If not, I'm, I don't mind playing it, you know, 60 short and uh, taking the long putt or even just the easy four. So um, I'm going to attack as many as I can and hopefully come in with a great score. I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. The same game plan I had on day one is the same game plan I'm going to have throughout the whole entire week. And I'm just going to play the best golf that I can. And if I happen to be on top after that, then I happen to be on top. If not, then I have to fight back maybe the next two rounds. But I don't, I don't think going outside of my comfort zone is going to put me ahead of the field. I think it's only going to hurt me. Really, I'm just going to stick to my game plan. Like on hole six, if I get far enough to go for it, I'll definitely go for it. But if the putter's on today again, then hopefully I'll shoot another low round. Uh, I think just being relaxed. Um, I'm throwing the disc really well. So I didn't put myself in like terrible positions to where I felt like I had to push. Um, I think most holes I had a lot of birdie opportunities and some I laid up from 35 or 40 feet the first day here at Eureka um, just to ensure par because I knew I could birdie some holes down the stretch. All right, but serious question. Over under one year of competitive tennis experience for Chris Clemens. Over. At hole one, <laughs> par four, 633 feet. You've seen it before. Over the earthen dam and then back up to the basket. Big backhand, common play. If you do go OB in the water, you're going to the drop zone. I got. I like how, you know, all the players here in their interviews, they're at least saying the right things. Everybody seems collected, calm. Yeah, they seem sure. aware of the all moment right, they're in, but the not card you today. Know, in, in awe of it. First mm -hmm. off of the tee box. From Louisville, Texas, Emerson Key. And we're really going to be able to see something that we weren't able to see yesterday at Northwood with Emerson. This kid, this young guy is uh, what? He's five five to five seven, something like that. Something like that. He's thrown farther than almost anyone on tour, and we're really going to get to see that today. He absolutely just rips. Definitely. Next up, That's a great shot. Yep. From Huntington Beach, California, four-time world champion, Paul McBath. I like to see it, too. You know, I know I've said it on the coverage before, but, you know, in the same mold as Paul, you know, you have Emerson, you have Nico, you have Drew Gibson, you have Garrett Gerthy. You know, you, I hear all the time, oh, that Simon Eagle body type, mm -hmm. that big germ body type. Like, that's what it's about. Y'all never throw far. It's like, no, man. I mean, there's some bombers. Yeah. A lot of them that are not big guys. I'd say some of the farthest throwing players are under 5'10 right now. Yep. Which is just incredible. It's, it's timing. It's about the core strength. It's about rotation and all that stuff. From Great shot Mason, from Paul. Arizona. Anthony Morella. <laughs> But here's a big, tall, lanky dude who can throw really far, so that's going back to that original I mean, traditional. it works both ways. Yeah, that's what sure. all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say one's better than the other. Right. Anthony. And this is turning over a bit, which can bring OB into play. And Wow, this is launched. Yeah, speaking of big distance, look at that. Just like we saw Gary Patton do in round one. Wow. That is OB Next in that corner. From Kansas City, Missouri, Chris Clemens. 
and it's, I think it's great having a lefty on this card here to really see this course attacked in a different way with a different spin. Yeah, Chris, certainly one of the best lefties we have in the game. And certainly one of the best combo players, too. His forehand is incredible, very powerful. So mm -hmm. he's usually not at a disadvantage when it comes to a big righty hyzer hole because he can actually get there with that lefty flick. Yeah. And that's a good safe drive. Now, lefty <laughs> drive definitely gets you in a difficult position as far as distance to the pin, but here we get to see that lefty flick right off the get, right out of the case. Excuse yeah, me. and that's big. I mean, that's that's probably yeah. approaching 380 to 400 foot power, I would mm -hmm. say, to go up that hill to that spot. And here's Anthony from his out of bounds lie. And this needs to get down. Oh no. This needs to get down, and that's not going to, and that's going to be a lost disc and an out of bounds back to back. Wow. AB is going to have a putt from probably an obstructed putt from maybe just inside 30 feet for a bogey to start off. Paul's just throwing the fluffiest putter shot ever. He's going to have a park job for his birdie to start this round off. Emerson, just perfect. Yeah. Great touch there. Nice little look at the nitty gritty. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. A lot of holes. You're talking to the spotter, talking with your group, trying mm -hmm. to get a fair spot for the player. And good putt from Chris Clemens. Yeah, great birdie. These holes, you get a uh, one meter relief from the end of the rocks that surround the lake. The rocks are inbound, so he's that's how he's getting so far up from the water yeah. there. Even though it looks like he's taking more than one meter, what he's doing is completely in the rules. Okay. Emerson and Paul will step up and tap in. Nice birdies to start the round. Mm -hmm. Again, not really one of the hardest holes to start off for these guys who have that 500 foot distance power, but um, it can get it can be a troublesome hole if you know, like Anthony Brella got in trouble because he throws too far. Yep, and uh, that can definitely be a factor to to worry about. Hole two, another par four, 615 feet with the OB down the right side the entire way. You've got the lake on the left, late in the hole, kind of in your head a little bit on the drive but certainly a huge factor on the approach as you go through this low tunnel you can see the ground slopes to the water and the basket is not more than about 20 to 25 feet away i really like downhill holes that have a low ceiling it really intru uh, introduces an interesting dynamic this is a little high but he might hit that oh, oh. yeah and that's going to keep him well out of position for the birdie but there is a high gap up there. I, I got to think that's what he was trying for. Mm -hmm. Paul Verdek's going with this roller on this play, and it's... This is going to be yeah, sublime. I, <laughs> gosh, I guess that's why. Very close to the water. He might, I wonder if he was a little nervous there, but the final spot is fantastic. Huge distance. This is a great hole for Chris, and he has just laced this line. Great skip as well, and that's really as good as you're going to see any forehand or back lefty backhand. And it is really hard to get low enough. Like it looks when somebody does it right, you kind of think, yeah, okay, whatever. But I find it it's very difficult to stay underneath that branch with mm -hmm. power. And AB has no. skipped OB, and that's three OBs and two holes. He's really going to need to turn things around here. Oh, look at this. Nice teamwork there. Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> Emerson's just going to play smart here. There's no way you're getting to the basket from that mm -hmm. spot. Play position. Set up your, your shot up there to get your par. That's maybe just around jump putt range. In other words, that's a great play. And this is a little low, I think. Mm. 
yeah. doesn't quite get up there, but it might be open putt. Gosh, it's going to be – it's it's hard to see from this angle, but it looks like he's going to have that low ceiling, but maybe if he straddles out, he might have uh, that opening. I think this might be a gator for Anthony. It looks great. Wow. Oh, Just a little unlucky no. there, but he'll, he's in the circle. Yeah, but that was – I mean, it almost looked like that was heading towards the basket. Like, it could have even drawn metal. Mm-hmm. Oh, the high Ooh. wide line, you, you know you got to challenge one of those three trees coming in on the angle, but it opens up that hyzer with the biggest ceiling, but Paul tree, unable to. The tree with an emphatic challenge accepted. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Emerson with a nice layup there. Chris does have to straddle out. Slightly low ceiling. Nice to be a lefty there. Oh, oh don't do that. Okay, good. Ooh. Good effort from Chris, but unfortunately just not enough hyzer. Oh, and Anthony splashes out, and that's going to be another bogey. Mm. Bogey on two hurts a little bit less than bogey on one. Bogey on one is is yeah. a hole that Anthony's thinking, maybe I can give myself a look for two. But this one is the third hardest hole in the course on a pretty difficult course. So. As evidenced by the fact that zero of these players are in birdie position. Exactly. I, mean, I guess we must have missed Paul's miss here. He'll be taking his par. Hole three, I think it's closer to 290 feet. Par three going slightly uphill through the pines. There's the play with the forehand out over the OB path. There's the backhand up the middle. And you even see some people taking kind of a slight hyzer window where they're trying to sneak through the trees on the right and come back to the basket. Uh, we're going to see what these players go with. I'm interested to see what Chris does as a lefty here. And Emerson's going to go that wide route over the path. It's looking a little bit short. It's going to challenge those early trees there. You just want to push that another 10, 15 feet. It's a good break, though, because if you catch that tree square, often you just kick right onto the path. Right. So to fight through, that's that's a positive. If this just stays straight, and it is, this is hunting metal almost. Paul Macbeth. Beautiful shot. Picture perfect. And at all times you see th people throw a backhand on this hole. You usually see, like, some sort of backdoor route, a turnover. But just to go dead straight down the middle, it seems like that's the – Obvious play, but not many people have the ability to do it mm -hmm. that accurately. That's mm -hmm. just, look how little that disc moved. It's just so easy yet so hard at the same time. Chris is going to flip up up the middle, which I really like that play as a lefty there. Mm -hmm. Caught up just a bit short, but still well done hitting that gap dead center. Anthony has a chance now. Got to get up there. Get a look for a birdie putt. This is Tends twisting right, a little don't bit. Kick left. No right, way. Kicks left. No. OB as well. You Man. can see he is in a little. He's in disbelief at this point. Yeah, I am too. And this is an opportunity. This is this is Anthony Barella's first appearance of the lead card at the World Championships. So this is a big deal for the kid, and to have the the start like this is, um, you know, it's a little bit devastating. Still early. It's still early, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Not what he was thinking of last night when he was going to sleep. No. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Cut from Chris. That's equivalent to an ace right there in tennis. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's up 40 love and then just hammering it right down the sideline. And a good putt for maybe. Solid putt for sure. And to be fair, every putt is equivalent to an ace, a disc golf ace, because it's just one shot. Blowing your mind right now, aren't just I, dude? To, just to spend one day in there, man. <laughs> what I wouldn't give. <laughs> you don't want to be in this mind, Nate. <laughs> Paul with the fantastic birdie. Yeah, making it look so easy. Hole four, par three, 423 feet straight ahead to the elevated basket. This one is blind. This one has OB on the right. And this one has some tough woods on the left side. Really demanding par three. I think the purest play is that dead straight mid-ranger putter where there's no real trees to stop you. You're just going all the way down, try to slide it up just short. You also see people take the right sideline. 
Paul's got the Luna, so you know he's going up the middle. This is perfect. Yeah, if that misses that tree, it doesn't. What? And it goes out of bounds. Horrible break. I and thought that was tracking for. It certainly I'm, was. I'm sure he's shocked to see a red flag. Oh, man, that was such a bad break. And it's going to put him in a really tough spot to save his par as well. Look like that tree is right in the way. Here's that hyzer line. It doesn't often, you know, with a driver, I don't see it really getting right to the pin too often. But it's not bad. I mean, he's I in think, the woods. He's 40 feet. I, I think 100% of players would take that result 95% of the time. Okay. Just stay with me here, Nate. I'm, I'll be, stay with me. I'm with you. I, I, I think what you're saying is it's a pretty good drive. It's a I great agree, place to I be. I agree with you there. Emerson Keith, an even better place to be, right in the edge of the bushes. I don't think he's going to have to deal with any of that stuff on his putt. Perfect weight on that shot. Beautifully done up the middle. And now Anthony <gasps> is going into the woods. And that is very early on the release. It really is a matter of how much it got out. It looks like it didn't get out at all. AB just having to lay up out to the fairway. So we're talking about best case now, four consecutive yep. bogeys. Mm -hmm. And Okay, good. It's overstable. I think he should be fine. Yeah, fantastic approach. But man, the frustration really building for Anthony now. That was a difficult shot there. He executed that very well. Yeah, he did. And Paul with a difficult shot himself to try to save par. And look how he didn't give himself a meter. Oh, Whoa. come on. Just that is a death putt. Tiptoeing on the sideline to give him the best angle to squeeze that hyzer around the tree. Are you kidding me? Wow. That was pretty One of the best incredible. par saves I've, I've seen in a long time. Chris, that can get dangerous with that hillside. It rolled just a bit, but he's mm -hmm. going to be just fine. Emerson with a chance to retake that lead. Oh, yeah. Big time Great pie. birdie. up biting Chris he takes the bogey as well as his putt just wouldn't quite stay in hole five par three 476 and this is probably the trickiest one yet because there's OB everywhere if you don't clear that ball field fence you're going to the drop zone there's also OB deep so if you go big and flatten your disc out you're likely to be long this one can be a big number for Anthony's sake I'm just hoping he gets this thing inbounds because he is in a precarious spot right now mm-hmm Emerson, the aggressive, high attacking line, showcasing that power that he has. That's a huge Turning his shot. hips and getting right there at the edge of the circle. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Masterfully executed. Is Paul closer or farther away? Um, I'm going to say closer because he stuck in the cage one time in this hole. I think you're right. And this he's looks, a little bit more aggressive with the straighter line to the pin. This looks really close. Yeah, that's great. With Paul in this hole, probably he's either OB or closer. You know, could yeah. be playing it, you know, very aggressively. Here's that forehand power. This is Heiser and quick, though. Huh? Yeah, just Good, though. getting over the fence. It's yep. over. Mm -hmm. Incredibly tough hole for a lefty here. We've seen Reed for Skira go for this and get the birdie several times. But, man, I think if I were a lefty with the same power that I have, I don't think I could see myself going for this hole. Anthony is absolutely going for it. And he doesn't he, like it? He doesn't like it. Uh, it's that, short? That's moving fast and no. hitting the fence at the base in the air. It's going to go to a very difficult drop zone. And this is not the Anthony Bro that we've been accustomed to seeing for the last two or three years. And this has hung out pretty wide. This needs a hyzer. Okay. Nice. So he's got a putt for a par. That's a good recovery.
Chris, a, I mean, it's fine. The result's fine, but it was a little bit solid off on his yeah. approach shot. Emerson Keith, come on, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah, what? I see Paul McBeth over there right next to the basket. I know I'm only up one at the Worlds. I'm here at 45 feet, tall basket. I'll bang it. Just, I, I'm almost not even impressed anymore by like what he's doing. Like, I mean, not I'm impressed by it, but I'm not surprised by not it anymore. Not surprised, and yeah. He's really rising to the occasion. It's it's really awesome to see this happen. Paul McBeth just being Paul McBeth for another turn. Anthony. Whoa. No, 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 Anthony. Hate to see it happen to somebody, somebody that you like so much. And he's just such a good kid. He's a, he's somebody that we all enjoy being around. And you know, like the situation that this is his first time on the World Championship League card. I know that my first appearance on League Card World Championships, I had just as bad, if not worse, of a start. And it's one of the most devastating feelings that there is. It's just, I, I to, you have to be in that situation to understand how heartbreaking it is. Mm -hmm. It's just an opportunity of a lifetime. And then you know, it's not that it's. He's going to put himself in this position for years to come. Yeah. But it's just tough to see that. Yeah, it is. Hole six, par four, nearly 900 feet. These guys are going to go big hyzer, big hyzer if they're looking for the birdie. If not, it's big hyzer, medium hyzer, putt. And the hardest hole in the course, as it always is when we play out here, averaging just below a par five. It's 4.89. So, I mean. Good shot from Emerson there. Paul with the big hyzer, this is going to be just fine. And the thing I worry about with Anthony is just as young as he is, as talented as he is, like just don't check out right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's a lot of fighting left to be done. Well, he's in 21st place right now. You know, top 20 of the world championships is a great position to be in. And on these courses, especially with Northwood coming up and then one more round at Eureka. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of difficult golf to be played. Sometimes you think that it's just over. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not over. It's just a, a little setback. This is going to be needing a really hyzer quick. Okay, good. Oh, that's in great position right there. That's a great shot from Anthony. He's got me nervous, folks. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly feeling a little bit tension right now. Just, I just want to see him play a hole clean, mm -hmm. pick up a birdie. Me too. We're all rooting for it. Chris Clemens just center cut, beautiful shot. Yes, if you're uh, if you're up past that last birdhouse, mm -hmm. you're doing great. It's a great landmark on the hole just to see it. I mean, if you're right behind it, it'd probably be a little annoying. But yeah. Other than that, as your second shot, it's a, a nice like distance gauge. This looks too high. Yeah, this is definitely drifting left. Sit. Oh, no! Dancing on the rope, just falling over the edge. So close to almost exactly what he was looking for. And Paul see if could take two strokes here. Yeah, this is a big opportunity. Yeah, he didn't he like it. He put it OB as well. It's looking left. But he is Paul McBeth, but it doesn't He's matter He's closer here. to the basket. Yep. But that is a, that's not a, not a good shot, especially considering that your chief competition is already out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Anthony Burrell, this is... Oh, no. This needs... No. Oh, no, that never crossed. He and goes straight deep. He's going to get about 15 feet from where he just was and going for it once again. And this is a little this bit. This is too high. This, this is OB left. Uh, this is overcorrected, perhaps. Okay, oh, good, no. good. It sticks. Wow, it's it looked overstable. like it was. It must be a really overstable disc because yeah. I thought, I, I agree with you. I saw it look like it was drifting left. And Chris just dissecting this hole perfectly and rolling to the pin. Nice. Very well done. Oh, my Emerson. gosh. I thought he just made that. Wow, that was a great effort for par. 
Anthony, this is his fifth, I believe. And that's going to go out of bounds. Paul. Just a surgeon. But like one of the best surgeons of all time. It's like a surgeon you pay extra money for just because you know he's very careful. Look at that moth flying around in the basket. That is some, that's beautiful. That was kind of cool. That was really cool. Was it a Luna moth? No, it wasn't. Couldn't be. It was. Couldn't be. It'd be too perfect. It honestly, it wasn't. But that is a type of moth, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Poor Anthony, man. Yeah. Hopefully Another he, triple. I, I, you know, and, and we've, we've all been in that situation. Um, I, I don't know if I've ever started off quite as tough as this, but no, we've, we've been in a situation where we've just been kind of dizzy because we've been so frustrated. Yeah, definitely. The, the thing we hope to see now is just that maybe he can smile and laugh about it because at this point, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It is. And when things are ridiculous, sometimes the only thing you can do is just laugh. Hole 7, par 3, 275 straight away. OB Creek on the left, OB Street on the right. A couple of trees to get past, but one of the easiest birdies to pick up on this course. Straight putter or straight forehand. Paul, a little Ooh. bit overturned, but man, that's a four-time result right there. That could have been... I could have kicked back and been had had no look at the pin, but now he's maybe 25 feet with an open look. Chris, nice. back door a little bit. Mm -hmm. Emerson flicking, I believe, the Explorer. His signature disc from Latitude and shot. Yep, sliding up there to those trees are right at the 27 foot range, I think, something like that. Gator for Anthony. And he's going straight up the gut there. And yeah. Okay. And he's got a look. Certainly, the nightmare is not going to be getting any worse here. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got to get a par. I think he's got it. I think he'll make birdie. But. Yeah. Paul, nice putt. Paul's confidence right now in the putting green is clearly just through the roof. Absolutely locked in. I mean, he's as hungry as he's ever been. Mm -hmm. Three-year drought, playing a great season so far. Yeah. He's a dangerous Anthony, yeah. man. There that, it is. That is a lot of crowd. crowds. Yeah, they're, they're all pulling for AB to, to turn things around, and that certainly helps a little bit. From what I can see here, I mean, he's, he's keeping his composure really well. Yeah, and so is Emerson. <laughs> well, yeah, he clearly is, but in a different way, Anthony is. But yeah. Emerson is unflappable right now. Wow. That is a star frame, and that is some money to charity right there, folks. Well done from our lead card. Hole 8, par 4, 793 feet. Everything short of the creek is out of bounds, so you have to make that gap and clear into this big field to avoid going to the drop zone with a penalty. If you get enough distance on the drive, you might think about attacking this green. I think these guys will. But again, this creek is really, really tough. If you do go out of bounds, you've got almost nowhere to stand. There's also a lake on the right that you don't really see from the drone footage there. So danger on both sides on the approach. Didn't really get the flip I would guess he's looking mm -hmm. for, but that's still plenty of distance. So he's like one fraction of a percent off his line. Yeah. He's done, Macbeth. He's just hot take. He's a he, he's a has been hot take. Nice my, shot there. Just my my two cents. I don't know. He missed the line there, a little bit. With he threw a great shot, of course, but he was just barely off. Mm -hmm. Could be the beginning of the end. Emerson is... That's the flip that Macbeth was looking for. See, Emerson's Paul's right in the middle of the beginning, I think. Yeah, of a great career. The way he's playing, wow. <laughs> is that Eric Oakley? Probably. <laughs> but no, Eric, Eric must have been out playing. Yeah, it sounded like it. Oh, look at this rip. Anthony with something to say. 
That is a sick drive. Wow, huge. That's even further than than Emerson. Really, those drives, as great as they were, it's really all about this shot right here. Nice spot for a lefty power mid-range. There is water off to the right, and he has he not found it. Safe. That will be a very tricky and scary putt from, mm, I think, just outside the circle. And plenty of poison ivy at that lie, it looks like. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Again, just... He's an artist, man. He is a is a frisbee artist. Emerson. Emerson's heading mm. towards the lake. Ooh. Oh, no. Worst case scenario. And with a great drive kicking to the right in the water, short. He's going to be out of bounds 60 feet from the pin. Just a gator is all you need after that after that drive. I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone be in a position where they could throw a forehand with an overstable mid-range to the pin. Yeah. That just is awesome from Anthony. Great bounce back. Don't, oh, no, no, way. no. And that's the first time we've seen a, a big slip up from Emerson. We've only seen a bogey, worst case, and now this is going to be a double at best. Uh-oh. And Chris does go for it from that scary place, and he pays the price. Yeah, this hole needs to have a two-meter relief rule. I think I mentioned yeah. it in one of the other videos. Mm -hmm. They're talking about it with the TD right now. You really don't have a fair or safe place to stand here. Yeah. The, punish the punishment is being out of bounds. The punishment shouldn't be you're out of bounds, and now you cannot stand on your second shot. Or on your next shot. And Emerson is he's in for his six, but now he's in danger of losing three strokes to who's event he's gonna be our new leader in the tournament, Paul McBeth. And awkward stances for both Chris and Emerson. They were able to make their putts, but paying the price for going for their putts and um See if Macbeth can gain three or if it's just going to be the two strokes. He's so locked in. And great birdie. Minus five through the most difficult stretch of the course. Incredible. All right, leaderboard check and chug that water, Jerem. We got a little break here. Paul Macbeth on fire. Minus five through eight. Chris Dickerson as well, moving up into fourth. Emerson falling off just a little bit lately, but it's close. Y'all, we got some new big sexy discs online, jumbuspro.com. You need to go check these things out. We're back at it on hole nine, par three, 354, the bridge hole. It's an island. If you miss it, you're going to the drop zone at the end of the bridge. You've got this bailout zone on the left side. Not many players taking advantage of that. Certainly not in these upper cards. You gotta get go for this birdie. So we're gonna see some straight mid ranges, I think, from these guys with a little bit of hyzer finish. Chris will probably do a similar thing. Probably also kind of a straight mid. Mm -hmm. Even as a lefty, it's a little scarier perhaps. He this hole just always, it just seems like you're, I mean, if you're, if you don't like tight spots, I feel like this bridge just makes you feel uncomfortable. I mean, if you're claustrophobic, there's something about just the metal beams that's different than, than like a tight tree line. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It just seems like it's different, so it stands out. This is going to be safe, but off to the left, I think. Yeah, right at there, the 45-foot range. Mm-hmm. Oh, Chris is going okay. a little sidearm, which I'm not too surprised to see that play. I like it. Yeah, that'll be right at the circle's edge. Oh, 40 feet. And Emerson, important time to bounce back. Yeah, first time we've really seen him have to deal with adversity. How does he handle it? This is hung out wide, but this look this looks great. Unless it's too far. Oh, it's... No way. 
No way. Emerson to the drop zone. Oh, that is such a brutal result. Just an inch or two away. Great way to recover that, but man, that... No, that went out of bounds. Mmm, wow. Two really strange efforts there from those guys. I'm, I'm sure they're pretty disappointed. Uh, six under in the front nine. I don't think we've, I've ever seen a six under in no, the front nine no. on this course. That, I, that's I don't believe so. I, I mean, that's equivalent to. Is it like like if it's touching the? Is the string considered inbounds or out of bounds? The string is considered out of bounds. It's gotta be the inside of the right. Yeah, so it's, it's not protruding. I'm gonna get that camera down. Let me see. The problem is it does. It, it has to cross the line. So. I mean, it's closer, but it's, it's still really out. close. But I mean. You guys call those. You guys should talk about it. Yeah, Emerson, Emerson played a provisional. Having a discussion about whether that's in or out. Yeah, it's a okay. two-stroke difference right there. It was Paul especially making that. Brady, and look at that. I mean, Emerson had the lead just a minute ago, and now he's five strokes back from Paul McBeth. I mean, it says two things. McBeth is a beast. Eureka is hard. And Eureka is hard, yeah. And anything can happen on any hole. Incredible. Action is heating up out here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to the PDGA for their support. Thank you to the Founders Club. We are going to get to that back nine right now, and we'll have it uploaded as soon as possible. See you guys there.